Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. We are going to discuss about the differences between synchronized blocks and synchronized method in the context of multi-threading. This will be in continuation to the race conditions video that we have discussed in which we discussed why the race condition happens and then synchronization is one of the mechanism which can help us to prevent race condition. Now, why do we want to do this? Synchronization mechanism comes into the picture because we want to achieve thread safety and in turn prevent race condition like we have discussed in the previous video also. Why do we want to prevent race condition where the situation where multiple threads trying to manipulate the shared variable we want to prevent so that we do not get any wrong result or incorrect result. So there are differences between synchronized blocks and synchronized method. Firstly, when we use a block, it is just going to do the synchronization. Okay, I'm talking of the word synchronization many times. Now you might think what is synchronization, the meaning of that. It basically means so if I apply synchronization mechanism on a certain section of code, I just want to ensure one thing that multiple threads do not access the critical resource or the critical section of my code. I make that portion synchronized or I make that method synchronized so that multiple threads do not manipulate the shared resource or the variable. That is as simple as that. Now, when we talk of synchronized blocks, they allow synchronization on a specific section of the code, but methods will apply the synchronization on the entire method. And there can be only one thread that can execute the synchronized method at a time. So if I have to put it in form of a table, a synchronized block requires the explicit use of a synchronized keyword and the lock object, whereas a method will only require that keyword to be added in the method declaration. We'll see an example of that also. Synchronized pro block provides more granular control, but the method will apply synchronization to the entire method body, even though we don't have to protect the entire method from multiple threads, but it will still apply the synchronization on the entire body. What it means to apply synchronization on the entire method body, like I said, there will be only one thread who can manipulate that object. There will be only one thread which can invoke that method. Other threads will not be able to invoke that method. Then in case of synchronized block, we can apply synchronization on different lock objects for different block. Think of it like there are multiple locks and different locks are protecting different sections of the code. So if I use a block, if I use a synchronized block, I'll acquire this lock and I'll just try to protect my particular section of the code. If I want to protect another section of the lock, another section of the code, I'll acquire the second lock and protect only that much. In case of synchronized method, the problem is there is one implicit lock which is associated with the object of the class. So that class will have its object. That object will have an implicit lock, okay, in case of instance methods or if it is a static method in the class. The problem is if I acquire the implicit lock associated with that class's object, no other object will be able to invoke any other synchronized method. So they will be kind of blocked forever. They will not be, none of the objects will be able to call any other synchronized method. In case of multiple, if there are multiple synchronized blocks, they can execute concurrently because there are different locks. Like this part of the critical section is not going to interfere with this part of the critical section. So there will be no interference. But if we have a synchronized method, there will be only one thread. Try to understand this portion very uh, clearly because questions can get very tricky around this. Only one thread can execute a synchronized method at a time on the same object. This, if you use a different object of a class, object number A and object number B, then it is not a problem. If it is the same object, then only one thread can execute the synchronized method. The next point is, if we use a block, we can synchronize specific critical section. Like I gave, this critical section is different, this critical section is different. It will allow the other non-synchronized section to be executed concurrently. Okay, which means... If I have a method which ranges from line number 11 to line number 20 and I want to secure only let's say line number 12 to 15, rest of the part is not a critical section for me. In that case, I can synchronize that much critical section only while I will allow the other parts of the code to be executed concurrently. But if I synchronize the entire method, it's like a blocking. It's like blocking what? It's blocking the entire method. This will potentially cause performance issue because it is reducing concurrency. And this is the syntax we are using synchronized keyword and the lock object. And this is the syntax for a synchronized method. So if you understand the differences between these two, the synchronized block and the method and try to understand where can it be applied, there can be many small questions, interview questions, which can be framed around this part only. So it is very important to understand essentially what is the difference, what lock they are trying to talk, what is the implicit lock, what will happen if I don't use a synchronized method or vice versa. So just try to understand all the points that we have told. 
So now let's see that with the help of a code demo. Cool. So now let's try to see synchronization in action with the example of a bank. So what we have done is we have taken a class called bank synchronization demo. We have one instance variable called balance and there's a constructor which will give an initial value like initial balance of the bank. Now there are two methods. One is a deposit and another is withdrawal. Like a normal bank function, we want to deposit some cash into our account. So that will increase my balance by how much amount I want to deposit. I've used a sleep method to simulate like when you're trying to deposit some money that is going to take some time to process. So it will sleep for one second. And then I'm updating my this balance instance variable to the new balance. Secondly, on the withdraw method, I'm just checking if the balance is greater than the amount, like it should not, the balance should not run negative, right? So we have to do this check. If the balance is greater than whatever amount I'm withdrawing, only then I will do the deduction of the withdrawal and I'll deduct, I will reduce my balance by how much amount I want to withdraw. Same, some processing time and printing out. And then I'm updating my balance with the new balance after withdrawal. Now we have a main method. Now what we want to do is we want to do some multi-threading over here to simulate a condition where there are multiple threads trying to deposit account, deposit amount into the same bank account and also there are multiple threads trying to withdraw the amount from the same bank account. So how can we do that? Firstly, let's, uh, let's create an uh, instance of this class. Let's say I give the initial bank account balance as 100 and I'll have two deposit thread and I'll have two withdrawal threads. So I'll give thread deposit one equal to new thread so how we create thread and all of that I've already covered in one of the initial videos. If you have not watched it, I would recommend to check out the playlist. I've linked in the description. So now when we try to do this, this is called the anonymous function. Now inside the run method, the actual logic of the thread will run. So what we will do is we'll say call the deposit method of this class. So this thread deposit one, the name of this thread is deposit one. It will try to deposit 40 rupees in the bank account. And I can, I can replace this with a lambda also. So it will look something like this, shorter condensed code. Now I'll copy the same thing and I'll call this as deposit 2. So one thread is trying to deposit 40 rupees, another thread is trying to deposit 50 rupees. And similarly, I'll have two threads to withdraw the amount also. So I'll call it withdraw 1 and I'll call the withdraw method. So I want to withdraw 30 rupees and then another thread is trying to withdraw, let's say, 50 rupees. So, how should the actual flow look like? My initial balance is 100 rupees. I'm depositing 40, 140. I'm deposited another 50, that is making 190. Then I'll withdraw 30 out of it. 190 minus 30 is 160. And 160, again, I'm going to withdraw all of 50 rupees. 160 minus 50 is 110. That is how my final balance should look like. So, now I'm going to start the thread. So, I'll just call deposit one dot start. And in this way, I'll start all the threads by calling the start method. Now, I want to print out the final get balance method, but before I do this, I have to ensure that all the threads have completed. So, for that, I have to call the join method. What does the join method do? Briefly, it will wait for the main thread, will wait for each of the threads to complete deposit one, deposit two, withdraw one, withdraw two. All of them should be completed. Because why do we want to wait? Because we are sleeping for one second. So, while we are sleeping, we don't want the main thread to exit. If, we, it, if, it, if the main thread exits, who will print out the balance? So, that is what we are going to do. We are going to use the join method that will throw an exception of interrupted exception. So, that is why we are going to put it inside a try catch. So, I'll implement that. So, I've implemented this. And now, finally, I will say what is the final balance. So, it's a final balance equal to account dot get balance. So, this is what the final balance is going to look like. So, now we have four threads to deposit to withdrawal. Now, let's run this. We should get a final balance of 110 rupees. We get a final balance of 70 rupees. So, just to understand what is happening behind the scenes, we can add some sysouts. So, what we can do is we can firstly give a name to each of the thread. So, I can just say like this, I'll give the name of each of the thread, deposit two, so that I, inside the method, I can just print out which thread is getting executed and accordingly see what is, what is happening, why the final balance is coming as 70. That is what we want to see, right? So after, in the deposit method, I'll just print it out, which thread is executing and what is the new balance looking like. So I'll say thread, so I'll just say thread dot current thread dot get name is running with updated 
बैलेंस इक्वल टू द न्यू बैलेंस ओके एंड सिमिलरली आई एम गोइंग टू डू द सेम हियर so with this will give us a context of which thread is actually running so let's run the code cool so what we see is first a deposit 1 is running with updated balance of 140 after that the withdraw 2 was running and that tried to update the balance to 50 why because when the withdraw 2 is running it is trying to withdraw 50 rupees okay and then deposit 2 is trying to update with 150 and withdraw 1 is running with 70 so clearly there is a problem of non atomicity in the operation which means by the time deposit 1 has updated the balance to 140 something happened behind the scenes firstly it tried to sleep for one second by the time it came back and updated this balance to new balance some other thread came into the picture and they tried to they tried to read the balance because for them 140 was not seen so what they did is they tried to withdraw from 100 if withdraw if withdraw 2 is running withdraw 2 is seeing balance is 100 100 minus 50 is 50 so 140 was not even updated when withdraw 2 started to run so it reduced 100 minus 50 then deposit 2 started running what it did is it is seeing 100 so it increased to 100 plus 50 150 now withdraw 1 is again running so now what is withdraw 1 seeing withdraw 1 is trying to reduce it to 30 okay so what is withdraw 1 seeing 100 so the point The, the thing what is happening is by the time the original thread is coming back and updating this balance it is not happening in one single atomic operation it is happening part by part and so what is happening is by the time they come back and update the balance they are going to sleep because they are going to sleep some other thread is coming and updating so that is causing a mess and incorrect result ideally what should happen is when the withdraw or the deposit is happening either one of them this entire line of code from line number 12 to 20 this should happen in one go in one shot as a atomic operation that is why the synchronization context now comes into the picture so first what we will see is we try to make this synchronized when we try to make this synchronized what should happen is in this case the entire balance should get updated it should sleep and then this balance should get updated to new balance and finally the threads work will be done so we'll print out after updating the balance also so that we can see what is the balance now updated to so initially it updated this to a variable new balance after running this it should update this balance and the same i am going to add synchronized keyword over here and after the balance is updated then i am going to print what is the final balance looking like so we'll run this now so here we are we see deposit 1 is first running it made it 140 then withdraw 2 is running now it reduced by 50 so it became 90 then withdraw 1 running withdraw 1 tried to withdraw 30 rupees so 90 minus 30 60 then we got final balance uh, final balance got printed deposit oh okay yeah i just had a typo over here so what happened is even before deposit 2 finished the main thread already concluded the balance that is why we are seeing the wrong balance it's a deposit 2 dot join i just uh, made it to deposit 1 only this should be deposit 2 dot join now let's run this final balance 110 like we had estimated earlier so as we can see now the atomic behavior is happening first only deposit 1 is updating 140 Then minus fifty ninety only withdraw two thread is running. Then withdraw one is running, making it to sixty, and then deposit two is running. So at a time, one thread is only manipulating it. Why? Why is this happening? Because the object of the class is account. The same object is trying to invoke two synchronized methods. So that is what we talked about in the PPT. That if the object is same and trying to invoke two synchronized methods, one object two synchronized methods. So other threads will be waiting. they will not be able to call so it will not happen that deposit 1 is depositing and deposit and withdraw 1 is also withdrawing it cannot happen that is why we made it synchronized so that is the entire trick that we did okay so the problem over here is we are synchronizing the entire method okay we are synchronizing the entire method which means everything what is the critical section over here my critical section is this line till this much if i had something over here some non critical section code over here because i made this method synchronized my thread will not even be able to access the non critical section of the code they will be waiting until that part of the code is completed so what i can alternately do is instead of making the method synchronized i'll write a synchronized block so i'll write synchronized i'll create a block 
use the lock of this object. So this means the current instance, the current object. So I'm acquiring the lock on my current object and I'll enclose this entire section of the code within my synchronized block. Okay. Now, the same thing I'm going to do over here. Synchronized and then this, I'll remove the synchronized keyword. And I'll secure my critical section of the code. Only this much is the critical section of the code. So now I will try to run this now. Okay, so now we have used synchronized block to secure our critical section of the code and we are getting the final balance 110. If I run this multiple times also, I should be getting the correct result because we have secured, made the code thread safe. Okay, so that is all about the synchronized block, synchronized method. How do we use it? when to use what and what is the key differences between both of them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. See you guys on the next one.